Hydration is an imperative component of both mental and physical performance, not only in sport, but in everyday life. From a young age, athletes are taught that hydration is a critical component of success in sport and that consuming sufficient quantities of fluid prior to both training and competition is imperative. Despite this, progressive dehydration is a common problem for athletes in competition for a variety of reasons. Some of these reasons being that the athlete is already in a state of hypohydration before competition and as activity increases, fluid uptake correspondingly increases, thus leading to a prolonged state of dehydration. Equally, other risks for dehydration are more difficult to be avoided, as the nature of the sport may play a role in the onset of dehydration. In some sports, the only time to replenish fluids is during breaks in play, escalating the risk of dehydration because of the limited time to restore fluids. The effects of dehydration is a widely researched topic and typically sees a trend in results that athletes should be aware of hydration levels in order to maximise cognitive and physical function. To test this theory, an experiment was devised to answer the research question, do hydration levels affect performance in a 10 km cycling time trial? It is well expressed in the research that meeting levels of hydration has a variety of positive effects on performance and although not completely unanimous, is pivotal to elite sport performance. Dehydration has been shown to impair psychological aspects of sport, namely concentration, decision making and focus. These coupled with earlier perceived exertion levels and muscle fatigue is the underlying reason behind decreased performance when under the effect of dehydration. There are a significant amount of studies that have explored this topic and have looked at the adverse effects of dehydration on performance, typically finding that regardless of the sport, athletes experiencing dehydration display bouts of poorer performance. Despite not being a conclusive numeric value for dehydration, to affect performance, a number of studies have mentioned that a fluid loss of equivalent to 2% body mass or greater is where athletes tend to find decreases in performance. However, in cooler temperatures, some athletes have been shown to display minimal signs of dehydration when losing the same amount of fluid. Typically, dehydration occurs faster in warm climates as a result of thermoregulation. Thermoregulation is the body's way of maintaining homeostasis for core body temperature, which is moderated through sweat. As athletes increase sweat output, the subsequent water intake is not adequate and thus leading to hypohydration. Studies have shown a decrease in all of the following physical categories when under the effect of hypohydration. Strength, 2%, power, 3%, and high intensity, high intensity endurance by 10%. Or less. Obviously, this is a sampled population, however, when looking at improving performance, 1 to 10% is a significant increase and can be the difference between winning and losing. Other studies have delved into the effects of hyperhydration on the cognitive function and mood of athletes. Typical findings are that it reduces awareness, focus, and reaction times, and despite no numerical value for these claims, many studies have expressed concurring views. Based off the research, the hypothesis is that during the hydrated trial, the subject will perform better physically and cognitively than when completing the dehydrated trial. It is expected that the athlete will compete the time trial in a faster time when hydrated as a result of eleva elevated physical and cognitive function. It is also expected that the athlete's heart rate, core body temperature and rate of perceived exertion RPE, will be lower when competing when completing the hydration trial as the body will not be under as immense stress. The experiment was taken place on two different days in successive weeks and consisted of a dehydrated 10 km cycling time trial and a hydrated 10 km cycling time trial. The experiment in both trials was conducted in a heat chamber set at 35 degrees and 50% humidity to ensure that the climate was the same in both trials. In both trials, everything was completed the same way except for the instructions given to the participant prior to coming to the laboratory. 12 hours prior to the dehydration trial, the athlete was instructed to not consume any fluids. This was to ensure that the athlete was in fact dehydrated before taking place in the experiment. Contrarily, in the second trial, where the athlete was hydrated, he was instructed to consume 500 ml of water every hour prior to coming to the trial. This ensured that the athlete would be pro properly hydrated before the commencement of the testing. In both trials, before the subject could begin, begin the trial, a number of measurements were taken, and these include the subject's weight, 
blood pressure, core temperature, heart rate, blood hydration, and urine samples. Once completed, the athlete could begin the one-minute medium-paced warm-up before the commencement of the trial. The athlete was then instructed that they had commenced the 10-minute 10, 10 time trial, and throughout the time Throughout the duration of the cycling, a number of measurements were taken whilst the participant was riding. These included heart rate every minute, RPE every five minutes, and core body temperature every five minutes from the ear. Post-trial, the athlete then recompleted all of these measurements taken pre-trial, except for the urine test. The participant is a 28-year-old male that is approximately 173 centimetres tall. He has a low to moderate activity level and is not an experienced competitive cycler. He has no underlying health problems and has given consent to perform these experiments. Through the trial, specific variables were measured at specific time points using the respective equipment. These variables were time via timer on the watt bike exercise bike, blood pressure with the use of a blood pressure cuff and stethoscope, heart rate via a polar heart rate monitor and watch, the participant's rate of perceived exertion was tested using the Borg's RPE scale. Participant's core temperature using Braun thermometer. Participant's urine was tested using a Tago pocket refractometer. Participant's blood to water content was also tested using a Hemlay blood centrifuge machine along with NIS micro hematocrit tubes, a, a Vitrex putty and an electronic digital caliper. Finally, to test the athlete's weight, a Wiederburn scale was used. Other equipment was used, including the Watt bike exercise bike and safety and sanitary equipment. To ensure that the reliability of the trials was upheld, there were a number of experiment protocols followed in order to control variables and create the most accurate environment possible. These included keeping the temperature and humidity exactly the same for both trials, as this is a main contributor to sweat loss and fatigue. Another variable that was maintained throughout both experiments was that all experiment brands were made the same to ensure reliability across results. The athlete also had the watt bike set up in the exact same way in both trials. This included the seat height and angle. Additionally, the athlete also completed a one minute warm up at moderate intensity prior to the commencement of these trials. The athlete also underwent the same measurements in both trials at the same time periods. Finally, the athlete was blind to their performance time in both trials. This was to ensure that the athlete was working at maximal intensity in both trials and didn't try and fix the trials to be more suited to the hypothesis. In the first trial, the athlete's results of the measurements taken prior to the commencement of the ride are as seen in the table. They show that the subject was relatively within normal range in blood pressure, heart rate, and core temperature. However, his hydration measurements were as expected. As seen, the urine sample measured has a numeric value of 1.02, indicating he is significantly dehydrated. Along with this, the blood hydration levels that the subject displayed furthermore supported the status of the athlete's hydration levels. As the athlete engaged in the cycle, it is clear that his heart rate and core temperature severely increased. This is typical of exercise, however, the severity at which both measurements increased is alarming and can sometimes lead to heat injury. The most concerning point is that the subject's core temperature reaches almost 40 degrees during the cycling, meaning that the body's thermoregulation techniques were struggling to maintain homeostasis. To further address this, the subject recorded a trend of 17 to 18 out of 20 throughout the entirety of the trial when giving respects to RPE scale. Finally, after the trial had finished, the measurements recorded showed that his heart rate had begun to slow and his blood pressure had returned to a normal range. Despite this, it can be seen that the athlete had lost 400 grams of water, 400 mils of water, in water weight and had clearly become more dehydrated than he was prior to the commencement of the trial. The subject finished with a time of 20 minutes and 20 seconds and was visibly exerted. In the second trial, the hydrated trial, the athlete recorded a higher weight and hydration level prior to the commencement of the cycle than he did in the previous trial. He also recorded a higher temperature and although it is higher, it is still in the optimal range. As seen on screen, the athlete has displayed a 1.0018 value for his urine sample, indicating that he is very hydrated. Equally, his blood hydration level supports this claim. 
During the trial, the measurements show that the subject is quite clearly more comfortable in this trial than he was in the first one. His heart rate stays relatively stable between 150 and 170 throughout the trial, which is a vast contrast to the frequent 180 plus presented throughout the dehydration trial. It is also noticeable that the athlete's RPE was significantly lower over the course of this trial. These factors show that the subject was exerting less energy whilst ma maintaining the same intensity as the first trial. It is important to note that the athlete's core temperature was significantly healthier in this trial, also, also staying between a range of 36 and 38. After the trial had been completed, the final results showed that he performed better in this trial than he did in the dehydration trial. The subject finished with a time of 19 minutes and 30 seconds and was far less physically exerted. His hydration levels still remained healthy despite losing approximately 800 ml of water during the ride. His heart rate also appeared to be returning to normal range along with his core temperature, which was 37.4 degrees at completion. There are many topics of discussion from this results section as well as the hypothesis made. The first point is that as expected, the athlete would experience a higher level of exertion when dehydrated in comparison to when hydrated. This is shown in a systematic review that looked at the effects that hydration has on physical and cognitive performance. It found that in multiple studies, an increase in fatigue was present when dehydrated. In conjunction with, it, with this, it found that an increase in effort for the same output was observed in athletes suffering from hypohydration and or dehydration. This was suggested in this trial's results as it was shown that the heart rate of the subject was significantly increased throughout the entirety of the dehydrated trial. This is as a result of the body's inability to thermoregulate due to the need to hold water in order to maintain water, imbalance, water balance in the body. Studies have shown that there is a direct correlation between temperature and fatigue and particularly core temperature. For this reason, it is understandable that the subjects experience quicker onset of fatigue in the dehydration trial as his core temperature, as mentioned, was near 40 degrees. This ultimately led to slower time in the trial. As well as what the results suggest, the athlete's RPE was also significantly higher in the dehydration trial in comparison with the hydration trial. Although susceptible to bias, the RPE scale is one of the most common ways of measuring an athlete's exertion levels. The athlete mentioned that he felt an equivalent of very bad to maximal exertion from around the fifth minute until completion of the dehydration trial. Whereas in the hydrated trial, the athlete expressed a moderate to slight concern with his exertion levels, yet still managed to ride faster. Another area of focus is on the amount of water weight lost during each time trial. In the dehydration trial, it was recorded that the athlete lost approximately 400 ml of water, whereas in the hydration trial, he lost approximately double that amount. This furthermore relays the point that athletes thermoregulate that the athlete's thermoregulation was under tremendous stress during the dehydration trial. This emulates findings in the study by Sorka et al., which found that athletes typically have lower thermoregulation measures when under the effects of hypohydration because the body has to conserve water. It is important to note that despite the appearance of reliable results, there is always discrepancies in data. And this can be as a result of both human error or equipment error. However, there appears to be no data that seems out of place. The results appear to support the hypothesis that being dehydrated would affect performance as a result of increased fatigue due to lower thermoregulation and an increased heart rate. The take home message for any athlete or coach is that to compete at phys peak physical condition, it is important that athletes understand that being hydrated can have a tremendous effect on performance. Educating athletes on the effect that hypohydration has on their overall performance is imperative as success is the goal. Keeping a urine osmolarity rating of as close to 1.0 is ideal if the technology is available. If not, drinking approximately 40 to 50 ml per kilogram of body weight every hour in the approaching 24 hours prior to competition is a rough way of keeping hydrated. This is the bibliography of everything used.